George Uresi, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, we do know for a certainty that the concept of concessioning has gained more prominence in governance process lately. Well, can, could you elaborate a little more on this concept, especially as regards the airports? I'm sorry, Harriet, I, I, I didn't hear you quite well. Well, what I said is that a lot for, for the past couple of years, we've seen that concessioning has gained prominence in governance process lately. Could you elaborate on this concept, especially as it regards the airports and the aviation sector? Okay, uh, I think I got to you. It's not, it's not very clear, but I think I, I had enough to be able to respond. Okay. Um, what you've been witnessing... Uh, what we've been witnessing in the couple, last couple of years is, is an attempt in fine to, to correct uh, some anomalies that existed uh, for the last few years and, and bring us back into a, into a, a situation of normalcy. Uh, having transactions with business partners uh, reflecting what, is, what, what transpires in the airport's business globally. Uh, mutually beneficial to both the airport as well as the concessionaire. Because the premise behind concessioning in the airport business is that the, the airport is a platform where more than 300 different businesses can happen. And the airport operator is not an expert at all these businesses. The airport operator has a job that says, I manage the airport. But if you're a retailer, you can come and do retail on my airport. If you're an, a hotel operator, you can come and do hotel uh, business on my airport, etc., etc. But because I'm an airport, I guarantee you feet, that's people that come to the airport. And if you do a business on my airport, it's premium because you get customers and you do business, you make money and I make money. The, the premise has never been for you to come and attach an umbilical cord to my revenue streams and take money away from me. That's not how the airport business model works. And I, we found that so many of the arrangements in our sector were built on that premise of this is a cash cow, let me attach an umbilical cord to it and suck money out of it. And we're trying to put a stop to all of that. So that's like one of the major problems that is facing concession in, in the airports. Now, is that the reason why you've seen the cancellation of quite a few of these agreements? Yes, that's, that's the exact reason. And uh, uh, contrary to, to some of the misinformation out there, the cancellation of any of our uh, concession agreements that were signed previously in FAN didn't just come about on one day. We approached every single one of these concessionaires, this management, and we said to them, this agreement you have with FAN is unsustainable. It, it is a breach of proper business principles. It favors you to the huge disadvantage of us. Besides that, we catalogued lots of breaches because most of these things are observed more in breach than, in, than in, uh, in meeting the concession agreement, even if the concession agreement fundamentally is, is wrong. And we said, let's renegotiate and bring these agreements into a position of equity for both yourselves and fan. And, you know, you know as, as, as masters of the universe will behave, they tell you, no, we're not going to do that. Is this not fan signature? As far as I have this signature, I'm not going to discuss anything with you because, the, you know, they are used to dealing with a, a management of government agencies that probably, uh, you know, would, would rather not take strong actions where they need to take them just to avoid uh, the issues we know about very well. But in this instance, we're determined. If we don't take... These are fundamental actions that need to be taken in order to get fan onto a normal platform like any other airport operator. And to, to have a situation where, unfortunately, uh, FAN continues to leak, continues to fetch water in a basket instead of a, a bucket, FAN is going to go out of existence like Nigeria Airways very soon. And, and these are fundamental actions that must be taken to get this organization back. We're exchanging a basket for fetching water for a bucket. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. So in this case, will it be that you'll probably be reviewing the framework to ensure that the concessioning program continues because we seem to be having a lot of um, private investors wanting to work with the government to ensure that most critical sectors, especially the aviation Thank sector, you. keeps running as it should be?
Well, if you can hear me, what I'm saying is that with all of those challenges, we should be looking at instituting or implementing a framework uh, which would be I'm suitable lost for. I, can't hear you. I do apologize, but if you can hear me, what I'm saying right now is that we should be looking at that's the agency now, the regulatory board should be looking at instituting a framework which would be suitable for all players in the aviation se sector to ensure that the concessioning program actually works because we do know that we have a lot of private investors who are wanting to work hand in hand with the government to ensure that critical sectors like the aviation industry stay as they should be. Oh yes, uh, Harriet. You know, we've we've been we went on a road show. We have some very ambitious uh, agendas and visions for for the airports of Nigeria. As you know, we we are trying to become airports like any other. We're not different from any other airport uh, operator in the world. Now, first of all, I'm very impressed with the interest we've found globally. I'm also very very happy with the processes we've put in place to arrive at new business transactions going forward. We've set very clear criteria, very clear hurdles, like it's done in the airport environment, that, pre that, that sort of guidelines for transacting any kind of concession that extracts the best value first for the airport and ensures that sufficient value is derived by the concessionaire. Because the airport even though it's a very high investment uh, uh, class of, of asset, it's also a high reward asset class when well managed. But that reward is not reward for just the people who hook their, their tentacles onto the airport. It's, it's a reward for the airport, first of all, and then a reward for the people who invest in the airport. So people around the world know that and, and, and expect that they will reap these rewards from us because we are on the verge of a, of a huge growth path in, in our industry. But we need to do things the way they are done across the world. We, we have to stop this notion of fan is some kind of uh, largest distribution center. And, and all I have to do is have the connection to attach my umbilical cord to fan and I'll suck. That's not going to happen anymore. People well, are going to have to be. Let's look if at you want to be an entrepreneur, that be an entrepreneur. To be seen a Come to the table and talk to professionals. Industry. We are running a business. The, whatever you're bringing must make sense to us, must make business for us, and make business for you. But we're going to stop this thing of everybody coming to, 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 to attach uh, uh, tentacles to fund and expect that no management of fund will dare challenge them. The, the, what we're seeing here is some so-called concessionaires finding it very difficult to deal with a professional management that demands proper, uh, uh, a proper relationship between them and us. They are too used to having gotten their way and to having gotten away with anything they do in this country. They think that they don't know that this is 2013 and that things must change. Of course, they are very good manipulators of public opinion, so they, they create the impression that uh, fan is lawless, which is not true. Uh, at the end of the day, I have absolutely no doubt everybody will see who has been lawless in, in, in all of these processes. But we have continued to say to them, this is not about chasing you away. Know. We're saying, come to the table, let's renegotiate a very skewed business arrangement into a proper airport concession. And they shy away from that. They go away, they think they can run to Abuja and they can run to connections and, and impose things on fan. And we're saying, no, that time is over. And the sooner these, these masters of the universe understand this, the better our business relationships with them will be. It's nothing personal. If they come to the table, well, we have a minister right now who's, who is herself a, 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 an entrepreneur. She's very business-minded. We, we want to do business. We don't want to do arrangements as they've been uh, in the past. And I think that's the message that FAN is sending. Well, we do know for a certainty that the Nigerian airports are actually bereft with a lot of challenges. For instance, we see that the mortality rate of airlines in the country is really very high. What do you think is responsible for this? Oh, well, uh, uh, Harriet, um, there are many things uh, that have been wrong with the, the air transport system in Nigeria for more than a generation. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting to hear people talk every day about the airports are this and the airports are that. 
But these are airports that, that this country abandoned since the early 80s, late 70s and early 80s when the government built airports. We probably had the most modern airport network in the continent at that time. But in the airport environment, you don't build airports and go to sleep for 30-something years. There's growth in passenger numbers. There's growth in, in passenger and air, uh, aircraft traffic. At some point, you get what you had in Montala Mohammed. You get what you had in Port Harcourt. The, the airports become dumps. And for the first time, we, we've woken up and we've said, no, this must stop. We are not different from anyone else in the world. We're exactly the same. We're as smart as everyone else. Why should, why should we make do with MMA the way it has been, with Port Harcourt the way it was, with Abuja having a domestic terminal that was, that was totally unacceptable, that, that did not dignify or respect the people who use the terminals. And we are making the change. We're, we are making the change, investing in the infrastructure, the work we are doing in, 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 in most of the airports, but I want to highlight Lagos and Abuja and Port Harcourt and Kano. We are trying to equate our airports with what you expect elsewhere. Now, Does this include this procurement of new aircraft? It's been in the air traffic control area. It's been in the airlines area. And, if you can hear me, what I'm saying is that with all these changes that you're trying to make to in ensuring that infrastructure is properly in developed at these a, airports, a airports. Does this include the procurement of new aircraft? We used to do this almost 24/7 for a period of about six weeks. Where are we? Where should we be? And how do we get there? And we drew up a roadmap that we are following. What I did ask you while, while you were talking, I do ap apologize for cutting you there, but you're talking about infrastructural development at the airports. Now, we know that there's a high mortality rate of airlines in Nigeria, but then we also know that there was a plan by the government to, to support airlines by procuring new aircrafts. I, is this being done? And if it's been done, what's the progress so far? Oh, well, yes, Harriet. I, I apologize also. I, I'm struggling to hear you, but I think I've caught you now. Um, well, the, the airline business model in Nigeria, um, uh, for, for a watcher like me who understands this business a little bit, has, has been a bit uh, uh, confusing. You know, um, I think we have reasonably high load factors. I, I fly all the time. The, the planes are full. Uh, I know that every passenger pays their fares, uh, but fundamentally there must be something wrong because the airlines continue to to complain that you know that they they are financially uh, uh, in the doldrums and they struggle to meet their obligations. So they struggle to become going concerns, successful going concerns, and then they seem to have a lifespan after which, after a while, they drop out of the out of the business. This was one of the things we brainstormed. Uh, we realized a couple of things that it was very difficult for our airlines. Uh, we noticed that the, the, the deals by which they acquire aircraft, which is the most expensive input in the airline uh, financials, uh, were not as competitive as they could be. You know, so it's difficult for an airline, a Nigerian airline, to compete with a Kenya Airways, for instance, or an Ethiopian Airways, for instance, that are able to acquire aircraft on very internationally competitive terms. And so aircraft became a key element in this equation. And, and government came up with a, with a very smart plan to say, okay, we would use the muzzle to negotiate with aircraft manufacturers to be able to acquire or procure aircraft at rates that are very, very good and very internationally competitive. That would hugely take away that pressure from our domestic carriers. And a number of other interventions which, which government is saying However, government is not going to give access to these to airlines that are continuing to be structured in the way they were previously. That airlines will have to, to change their business models. They would have to have uh, uh, very professional management. They would have to change their ownership structures so that only professionals, uh, the CEO, the chief financial officer, the chief operating officer, these people would be... Uh, uh, employed on, very, on merit, and they would have independent non-executive boards that had fiduciary responsibility for the management of the assets and the business of an airline so that government would then say, all right, we're now in a position to for you to access these palliatives that will allow you to compete favorably. And this process is evolving. It's not a one-day process. Um, we believe that by the end of this year, 
uh, according to the to the to the uh, schedule that these interventions will begin to take uh, uh, take shape in this industry and in the, in the future it will result in a very much more viable airline industry in the country well, what I did pick up from what you were saying was that the some of these airlines are actually experiencing financial troubles but we know for a certainty that an aviation intervention fund was made available by the central bank of nigeria now what's the current status of this funds is it that the airlines are not getting as much of it as they should be uh well harriet that that's the issue um previously interventions have been made and and government sits astounded having made <laughs> interventions into the industry to find that the the basic position of the airlines doesn't change because interventions are, are released to owners of airlines and it's very difficult for government to control what owners of airlines do with these funds when they are released but what transpires is that the airlines continue to remain in the doldrums and the, no evidence is seen the last release was about 35 billion and shortly after the 35 billion release some airlines even went down and out of the market and those that remain continue to remain comatose so what government i think is saying is that you you cannot continue to every couple of years release lots of billions of naira to owners of airlines and then you don't see any outcome of that and instead government has said the intervention fund that currently the CBN, you know what the CBN did with the Federal Ministry of Aviation, they convened a team of people to think through how best can we make intervention funds impact positively on the airlines. And all of these uh, uh, initiatives I'm talking about now are the outcome of that think tank process. You know, we are very smart people in Nigeria, but you know, if we apply that smartness positively, uh, we are going to get outcomes that are in our interest into the future. We cannot continue to do the same things we were doing before and expect a different outcome. I think that's what government is saying now, that these interventions will not be given to individuals anymore. Uh, airlines will have to have proper business structures, and then government will be making these interventions available with, to organizations with a proper uh, corporate governance structure that you can hold accountable. So what's the current position within, with, between the the agency now and one of the concessionaires who actually is handling some of the projects at the airport. So what's the current position between the agency now and one of the concessionaires who actually is handling some of the projects at the airport? Which one would that be, Harriet? Well, the recent one which has been in the news lately with the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria and Mavis Limited in particular. Mavis, yes. Oh, uh, Mavis was in a, uh, a case with, uh, Fine wasn't a party to this, to this case. It was a case in court between Mavis and uh, Sita. Uh, we have read in the media, like everyone else, uh, what the outcomes of this uh, case have, are supposed to have been. We certainly haven't been served any uh, transcript of a judgment or, or any such papers. So just like you, we've heard uh, this outcome. From what we've heard, obviously, the outcome is, is uh, negative, has negative implications on our business. And so we are trying to take uh, our own actions to, uh, to let our own side be heard because we were not heard uh, in this process. Well, thank you so much, George Uresi, for speaking with us this morning on Business Morning. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.